Okay guys, so by popular demand, I am doing a grocery haul. So the first thing that I do before I go shopping is I take inventory, which usually looks like me looking at the door where I have my magnets. This is my staple list. This is what I must have at all times for me to function. Well, maybe not to function, but to eat. Because if I don't have any of the things listed here, I'm gonna be mad. And I'm gonna talk more about staples a little bit later. And other than that, I just take a quick photo of my refrigerator. Why? Because this is the quickest way to make a grocery list without actually making a grocery list. So for those of you who ask me, do I make a shopping list prior to shopping? Yes, sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't because it gives me a more creative license to just go to the grocery store and pick up what looks good, which is a great way to shop because it can help you buy things that are in season, especially if you're going to a farmer's market and to answer one of your first questions, which is what are some staple things that you should buy? The short answer is whatever you want. I mean, this is about you. Your staples are honestly the things that you know that you enjoy the most, which is important. It's not a staple if you don't like it. So number one, make a list of foods you thoroughly enjoy. Meaning if you had the option between ice cream or that, you'd pick that. And especially if you're transitioning, because that's another question that I get from you guys, buy things that you enjoy, because that will play a major role in you resisting temptation if that is an obstacle for you. And if you are newly plant-based and just wanna make sure that you're really getting in all of your vitamins, minerals, macros, my best tip to you, which is the easiest hack and what I personally do, is I just eat the rainbow. In other words, make sure that you're getting a variety of foods in different colors. So for instance, dark leafy greens um, like kale are usually rich in vitamin A and K. And keep in mind, I'm not a nutritionist, but if you guys do want me to talk about this a little bit more and how I kind of monitor, then I can put that in the next video, which is the grocery list video. And of course, don't be afraid to talk to your doctor when you have your annual physical and get your blood work done. Ask your doctor about what your levels look like and if you are deficient anywhere. But again, I can talk about that in the next video. So if you want me to, then type nutrition down in the comment section. So when I get home from the store, this is my process. I roll out my rolling rack, I get my soap, and I wash everything that I have bought, not just my produce, literally every single thing that I buy, no matter if it comes naked or with plastic or in a cardboard box, it gets washed and i also have seen some comments concerning using alternatives but i am using soap because we are in the middle of a pandemic and i did film this over like a couple of days so excuse the change in produce so this is everything that i got in this trip and again i did not make a grocery list so i just went there knowing what i normally buy and also keeping my eye out for what looked good i got raspberries mango grapefruit, bell pepper, carrots, cucumber, cilantro, red onion and eggplant because I had never seen this variety before, avocado, lots of bananas, I think two bunches, lime, jalapeno, kale also known as dinosaur kale, spinach, lettuce, and some more carrots as well as some granulated garlic because they didn't have powdered and some onion powder. Oh, and also clove because I wanted to use these for tea. And how cute is this little system? I was trying to save some space in my pantry and so I had been really liking this as an alternative. And it looks like the next trip I will also be stocking up on some smoked paprika. And one more again, this is a look at my refrigerator. And so before I put everything away, I just wanted to quickly go over organization because a lot of you guys asked me about um, how to make your groceries last longer. And so this is kind of relevant to that. I think I speak for more than a few of us when I say not being able to see everything that's in your refrigerator, it's like 98% of the reason why it goes bad. Because if you don't have access to it, like of course you ain't gonna eat it. As you guys know, I use these weck jars and you know, stacking them and having them all flat was basically like an accident waiting to happen because you knock into stuff and things fall over. And this is about getting to our food easily. And most importantly, I wanna be able to see everything. So stacking was not allowing me to do that. So I have these dividers and I like these ones specifically because they have that little kind of handle on the front. So it just makes it really easy. They glide right in, right out. This is a smaller fridge, so I also got this little drawer, which I like because it's adjustable, which allows me to utilize that like dead space above all of these products so I can fit more, but still keep things visible and within my reach. 
So one of the things that I do to keep my foods lasting as long as possible, and I'm sure you guys have seen this hack before, but that's just putting anything that has a root system on it into a glass of water. And I'm telling you, this is the move. These are actually garlic that I got from a farmer's market weeks ago. I still have these, you guys. In fact, I'm gonna look up the date that I bought these and put it on the screen because, wow. And with this method, you will notice that your foods are aging, but this is actually just a normal growth pattern because underneath those dead wilted leaves, you will notice new growth actually sprouting up. So things like spring onions, I just peel that layer away. So that's really just the plant like redirecting its energy and the roots will continue to grow as well as the plant. So as you guys can see, this leek is still growing beyond where I initially cut it. So this is the main configuration of at least my refrigerator, which as you guys can see is like kind of micro. It's narrow because I live in a small space, but generally speaking for any refrigerator, your first shelf is going to be your cool shelf, meaning that this is actually not the coldest part of your refrigerator because heat rises. So this is where my frequent flyers are. This is the stuff I'm going to reach for the most and or the things that I'm going to use quickly i've put them there for easy access it's the first thing i see i can reach in i can grab it no problem and then the next drawn that's like my general shelf because again it's still easy access because it's up higher but also this shelf is going to be a little bit cooler because again heat rises which means as we go down our shelves are going to get colder and colder so the drawer at the bottom is going to be the coldest temperature and therefore is where you should keep like your fruits and veggies or at least the majority of them. However, you will notice that I have all fruits here because in a perfect world, I would actually have two drawers here, one for fruits and one for veggies. And that's because these are the items that emit ethylene gases, which will make your food go bad faster. So I definitely separate them. I think I'm gonna be migrating all of my herbs actually to the door of my refrigerator, which keep in mind that the temperature is going to be more inconsistent in that area, but herbs will be one of the things that can tolerate that. And as you guys probably have noticed, I definitely favor my clear glass containers because again, I think it's more convenient to always be able to see everything, but I still like these stainless steel containers as well. And because I have so few of them, I'm only really ever like utilizing two of them in my fridge. So I already kind of know exactly what's in them. I don't have to guess. And the other two are in my freezer. So this is what my refrigerator looked like after. As you guys can see, I do have a plastic container in there because that is something that I acquired in the kind of trial and error process of learning what type of quote unquote Tupperware worked best for me. And in a perfect world, I would have a container to fit all of those greens. But after this particular grocery shop, I did not. You should definitely have them in a container that is going to keep in their moisture while also giving the option for some of that moisture to be wicked away. So I have showed you guys in a previous video how I do that by just putting a um, towel. You could put paper towel or bamboo. So just think about how your food looks when it spoils. If it gets soggy in its container, then that means that you're going to want to put in something to absorb that excess moisture and if it gets like dry and wilted then you know that that's something that you actually need to put a moist towel in and then things that i do not put in the refrigerator are things like tomatoes potatoes and onions and this is just me showing you guys the sprouts that come off of them because i did get some questions about how i grow them this happens on its own and the final thing i know you guys are looking forward to is knowing how much all of this costs so my total this day was about $60. And if by chance that seems like a lot, keep in mind that all of the produce that you guys saw in this video is organic. So the market that I went to only sells organic produce. So that bumps everything up a little bit. You guys can do as you please. Just keep in mind that there are some things that you definitely don't wanna buy conventional like strawberries. Eating plant-based is not expensive because food shopping is what you make it. It's just like buying a car. You purchase what is in your budget. You can get a car or you can get a luxury vehicle. At the end of the day, they both serve the same purpose. So if you don't want to spend a fortune on food, like don't. Don't forget to subscribe if you are looking forward to seeing the grocery list video because I'm not sure which day I'm going to post it, but it is coming soon. So don't miss it. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.